Okay. There we go. Ooh, now I won't project. Uh, so we recently merged with the Institute because of the sort of holistic collaboration that we can have integrating food with energy, water, community, and environment. And it's a really exciting partnership. So I'm really pleased to be part of the Institute now. Um, does this work? Next slide. There we go. Um, I am admittedly very biased uh, with an unabashed agenda to prove that food systems are one of, if not the, most powerful leverage points to address global challenges. I believe sincerely that local and regional food systems are at the core of change. We need to create this change. And we have asked our speakers this morning to consider including that leverage point in their remarks. After yesterday's impressive speakers, it seems I'm in excellent company. Paul Hawken presented 100 solutions towards drawing down carbon, and I counted on that list 23 that were food and ag related, and I probably missed some. Nancy Fund of DBL Partners has been investing in food and ag for over 10 years to create positive change. Rob Bernard of Microsoft shared innovations inspired by challenges faced by oyster industry in the Puget Sound. And attorney Rick Sains outlined a creative financial solution to fund emissions reductions. This is all pretty heady stuff. Does that work? Next slide. Just for a little visual color. Um, when we talk about investing for environmental, social, and governance change, the role of food is relatively straightforward. It can be refreshingly uncomplicated when compared with technology, renewable energy, and policy change. Although, each of these areas, when applied to food systems, demonstrate the true power that food has as a change agent. Yesterday, Paul also gave us an example of a simple and inexpensive change to rice production that will reduce its methane emissions by 75%. That's truly significant. Colin O'Mara from National Wildlife Federation impressed upon us the importance of connecting our children with nature. Food is nature. What better way to connect kids with nature in a vitally meaningful way than through food and farming? Every single educational concept that can, can be expressed through food production, processing, distribution, access consumption, and recovery. Peter McKnight of Generation Investment Management asked us to ask ourselves, are we doing everything we can to address the change that we need? And that can be a little bit of a daunting question. But through the lens of food, there are lots of ways that we can affect solutions. And if we make these little habit changes in each of these phases of the food system, and what isn't up there is investing in the food system. And one of the things I'm really proud to represent with the Sun Valley Institute is our commitment to not just creating solutions, but to helping people understand how to invest in them. Borrowing Peter's reference to Voltaire, common sense is not always too common, but food sense is. I'm excited to introduce this morning four experts, each of whom have made and continue to make enormous contributions towards building resilience in local economies. We'll hear from a food system expert, an economist, a food entrepreneur, and a place-based base impact investing professor. I'm honored first to introduce my friend, Oren Hesterman. Oren is one of the biggest, most effective players in the food movement, whether ag, urban farming, or food financing, Oren has been a thought leader for more than 35 years. He currently serves as president and CEO of Fair Food Network, a national nonprofit that pioneers solutions to support farmers, strengthen local economies, and increase access to nutritious food, especially in our most underserved communities. His 2011 book, Fair Food, Growing a Healthy, Sustainable Food System for All, is required reading at 25 colleges and universities. Oren, thank you for being here to share with us the myriad ways a community can improve individual economic and environmental stability by addressing food system. 